so I'm guessing they're not in Detroit anymore or Chicago. In fact, where are they? they do, this is kind of just out of nowhere. What fuck? It's the same tech as Batman's wings. Oh, that was on Mars. It's a little old listening to you guys crowing about how great those Martian wrench jobs were. You're the best, sweetheart. So demeaning. They're drinking root beers and she's like, hey, I'm trying to help you guys out. And they're just like, oh, thanks, love. I don't really give a shit, though. They really like saying it. They really start cementing that as their phrase. It gets to the point, though, that you see... You kind of clip through the cab there. <laughs> now he has paper. That paper is massive. That's not A4. Oh no, they now have a permit when he was already mayor of the city for like a whole season and now he just works out he could just, you know, get a permit to level the place they live in. I'm still pretty sure they can't even as mayor, but... What the fuck have they got? Those are like truncheons but baseball bat colored because look at the handles. The, the amount of buildings that are knocked down in this fictional version of Chicago makes you wonder how there's any city skyline left at all. And they never see any pedestrians anymore. <laughs> I don't even get what. Uh, what's happening now? Why is he dressed like M. Bison? Get it? Because he's fat. But. So he's now just. claimed himself dictator of Chicago? Is that what's happening? get it because he's fat. Like the entire joke with this character being the villain is he's fat, he smells of cheese and he like eats to, likes to eat worms and has a big butt and smells. It's like a Simpsons bit. <laughs> Fair enough. That's pretty good. Mice, rice, vice, old spice. It's to the point that they broke Chicago so much they'd be doing people a favor by removing it in this canon, you know? What the hell's going on with his eyebrows in this shot? What the hell's going on with his anatomy in all shots? Oh, 
Right, to be honest, you keep blowing up their building anyway, so... Wow, their proportions are just getting fucked. Did they change animator in this? Like, his head's getting bobblehead size, and then shrinking back down. It's making him look swole, making him look weird proportions. He looks like he's lost weight. Frame to frame. stop the biker mice before they literally blow up buildings and shoot people with guns and lasers. And just saying these bad guys are, the, the, dude, they literally work for a fat cat business money. He'd probably just get you thrown in jail because he's rich and you're not. Let's face it. So they're just going to stand in the building. Whilst it's being demolished. is steaming up. <laughs> steaming up in the Vincent Cross Charlie fanfic, everyone. <laughs> Literally no one asks for this in a kid's show. They're trying to push sexual attention over literally anything else they could be focusing on, like basic proportion, and continuity, and lighting, and continuity, <laughs> like, you know, just anything more cohesive than trying to get them the mouse laid of a human. Strong fan. <laughs> like, Vincent just gradually turns into a rip-off animaniac after a while, and it's just like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> Australian cat biker. He's a psychic ostrich. What the fuck was that? And he's driving a fucking gold wing by the look of it. What the fuck is this? People said furries weren't a thing until recently. Like, have they watched this? Is it so kind of like 
Why did he have to wiggle his ass? <laughs> like, you know, oh yeah, my ass is big. And like, you turn around and see this, like, fat cake. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Why has Moto got a booty? Because he's psychic, he also is massive. No, her husband. -er. Plot convenience. <laughs> oh man. Oh, please tell me that cat's been blown back to where it came from. Oh, no such luck, mate. I'm having too much fun. <laughs> That's fun, man. I'm on the hospital of Mr. Highway. Yeah, excellent idea, big fella. <laughs> too bad Vinny had to miss this. Yep, guess you will have to be the one. <laughs> what kind of jive ass slang is that? <laughs> Pretty old school. Yeah, I was distracted by the psychic Australian cat before, but Carbuncle, like, neatening his boss's tie for him felt hella gay. <laughs> like, there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that. You know, there's something weirdly intimate and sexual about, like, straightening someone else's tie for them. It just feels... Oh, for fuck's sake. What's with the ass shit lately? Get it? Because... Is it? Is it? The fact that most Plutarchians seem like, what the fuck is this butt shit? Oh, for fuck's sake. Like, there's something about 90s cartoons like this in the same vein that seem to think that if you're a villain, you have to be, like, doing all this cringe shit. Is there a giant monkey now? I want to know is, how does an alien know about King Kong? Yeah. What's King Kong? <laughs> okay, that's pretty solid. <laughs> Guy's just like, nah. Holding hands now, it's cute. <laughs> what the fuck? I thought so. Why is he surrendering? King Kong. Now it's the story of the Alamo. That kitty cat's an old time Earth movie freak. He must monitor broadcast movies like King Kong and the Alamo in space. Well, okay then. I get cable movies too. The general sent you to bring out women and children, right? Uh, how do you know? Great. We can send out. Grandma. Grandma? <laughs> I have to use, madame. Oh, no, you must have to use. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't let anybody take any pictures of me like this. We got tabloids on Mars, too. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Mars was blown up in the first season, and that was the whole thing. Plutarch fucked up Mars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
the most hammed up sneeze I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> this whole show is just a weird trip. Like, someone, not me, because I don't really do that kind of stuff. Someone needs to take something mind-altering and watch this show and be like, Dude, <laughs> like, it's, it's just so, like, nothing is connected. Things just happen. Random elements are integrated. There's no theming. Shit happens, you know. Yeah, you remember that generation, though, where it was like all the bad guys couldn't just be simply evil and kind of have an evil call. They had to be evil but, like, really fucking lame. And then all of the guys that were, like, the heroes had to be cool. And then, like, the evil guys had to have stupid, embarrassing shit going on where they're like, ha, I like gross shit and I'm disgusting and fat and I have flatulence. And you're like... Is it just so that no one, like, was questioning why the two fought? Like, what was that? That was a whole thing. Because then you think about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like, Shredder's fucking cool, Splinter's fucking cool. I know Splinter's not a villain, but you know what I mean, like, the Foot Clan are pretty cool. Like, you know, there's shit there. And then it's like every other one apart from that decided that the villain had to be a fucking terrible dumbass. Like, to be honest, Lemberger's even less memorable than the villain in Street Sharks, and I don't remember the Street Shark villain's name. And the only reason I know his name is because I'm watching these right now. <laughs> Notice they never have a... <laughs> what is going on with Frottle's proportions? They really need to sort him out. One moment his ears are big, they're small, his head's big, it's small, they're furry, they're not furry. They're very furry, you know what I mean? Whoever invented the tentacle creature needs to just stop. Why has he got, like, weird brass ducks of oil on? <laughs> they just... Just fucking bomb them. Yeah, like, season two started off really well, and I'm feeling like the animation's taking a bit of a dip again, like the drawing and stuff, as maybe as time pressures get in. And, like, again, they're doing the villain of the week shit. Oh, there's a motorcycle designer. Oh, that'd explain a lot. Yeah, you know, it just feels a bit like, uh... We'll see for the next one, right? I'll do one more. <laughs> 